Hey there, monkeys. Grab that cup of coffee, kick back, and relax. We'll get started with a sit rep in just a minute. Hey, morning, folks. It's about 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas, live in the Monkey Lounge. It is 7-31, 2023, and man, we have got a lot of things to cover today. Uh, everything from North Korea providing stuff to uh, Ukraine to fire on Russia to uh, the drones attacking Moscow. So we're going to look at all of that. We're even going to look at some of the volcanic alerts that are going on out there right now in certain areas. So uh, sit back, relax, uh, as I always say, get that cup of coffee and uh, enjoy this show. So let's, uh, let's speak in a coffee, let's jump over to our mini board. Just so you guys know, we are very excited about this. If you haven't done so and you want some amazing coffee, um, we have uh, three uh, variants for you here. We've got um, our Fog Navigator, which is uh, get you moving in the morning, good, good cup of coffee at any time, but... Uh, but it's a nice uh, dark roast, uh, has that chocolate note to it. Um, and then uh, we've got the the Texas Pecan, which is a little flavored uh, thing. That's actually a, a biggest seller we have right now. Um, and then we have a house decaf that is also very uh, robust. It's a dark roast also. And, and um, we'll be adding to these over time. But these are our first three that we're going to go with after numerous taste tests. And uh, we have got a... It's an amazing, uh, handcrafted, small batch, uh, just a solid coffee. You will love it. I guarantee it. All right. So let's do this. Let's jump on over here to Skyglass as we uh, take a look at the what's happening in the sky. And um, on screen, 161, but that's after we've already pulled out the, uh, let's see, Text 2s sitting at 22 T38 lawn darts and 53 text twos. So those are trainers we've pulled out of this. And then uh, I know the SR20, I could probably back that out also. Uh, looks to be a trainer aircraft. And uh, let's see, as we get through, let's look at the air refuelers for this morning. We'll go down to the Pegasus and uh, look at that one. We've got five 767-200s up total. And then uh, that's going to be all over the world, really. Uh, on screen, looks like we've, we're showing four on screen, so one's probably over in Europe. And then let's look at the KC-135, 19 of those, and let's see if I've got any DC-10s up, and one DC-10. So we're going to look at those, let those traces marinate for a minute. Remember, these traces are in five-second increments, and so it uh, just goes to show you how powerful Skyglass is. The beauty of using this particular platform is that I can actually kick it up to the side and it gives me a completely different set of data, right? Because now you know what this thing is doing, different altitude deviations, instead of just a hard line trace uh, where you can see it doing laps, right? So notice we've got these, bo these boys jumping up uh, early in the morning. Looks like two of them are headed as to their usual post down here on the Texas border. And then looks like we've got a lot of activity down southern Georgia, down over kind of central Florida side of the house, out over the water off of uh, Virginia Beach. A little bit of stuff up here. Keep in mind, Flashbang, is um, he's out here at his uh, beach residence until August 6th. And we're going to look at that closer here in just a minute when we get into his schedule. Um, but let me see. Now we're going to jump over to Europe and see if we've got any air refueling going on over there. Of course we do. 
looks to be over. This is kind of interesting. Interesting, the Adriatic Sea, uh, just off of kind of the calf muscle of Italy. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to be our last little air refueler that is up. So let's do this. Let me jump back over to Conus, which means continental United States, and. Here we go. All right, let me undo these. And then let's see here just very quickly if I've got any drones, Q4s that are up that catch my eye. Now nah, we don't. So, all right, let's get over to our watch list. We start kicking the tires. Uh, we've got a little bit of stuff coming out. It's a G5. Looks to be headed, I can't tell if that's inbound or outbound to the U.S., left of Hawaii. And, uh, and then those, that looks to be an interesting call sign of a C-17 coming out of Hawaii, headed back to the U.S. And then we've got that one there also coming out of Hawaii, which was interesting. That's a 742 Doomsday Bird out in Hano. A couple more survey flights, another survey flight. And you can see, kind of kick it up here to the side a little bit, our high altitude mill intel NSA gathering birds, uh, and believe me, there's a lot more than what we see there. These are all survey flights. Still continuing to do surveys, although I'm going to show you, it looks like it has settled in a little bit. Um, and again, these look to be Homeland Security or maybe uh, NOAA birds. It's hard to tell, or maybe both. Both of them are, are BE-30s, and then, uh, or say BE-300. And then look at this uh, couple more off the northeast coast up near Flashbang. Got a lot of NOAA activity going on. So we'll keep our eye on those. And uh, then this R-135 looks to be coming back. It, uh, it was actually, I eh, can't tell if that's up there in Newfoundland or um, from the, from the thing. Uh, it could be. Yeah, that actually came out of Newfoundland. And then notice we have something that transitioned all the way back. Looks like a C-17 from across the drink into Europe, right? Okay, now let's see. We got our normal high flyers up there. It looks like some C-17s in the area. So some, some of the logistics movers, um, mill intel balloons, another C-17. That's a British C-17. And then a survey flight, a little NA there over Belgium. There is... One, we've got Brio 66 and Brio 68 intelligence gathering aircraft. Uh, one north, one south, right? Again, third party, right? This is, uh, they outsource that part of the work with Lasai Aviation. And then here, coming out of Bahrain, it looks like we got a C-17 that has actually departed and landed and departed. And nothing in Japan and nothing in Australia. So... Let's jump on over to our next piece, which is going to be your Intel aircraft. Notice you got one that looks to have left the region. The darker trace that's going to the yellow trace is, is I believe, it looks like it was heading to the left, uh, westbound. And then, of course, look at uh, this is going to be Brio 68 and Brio 66 doing a lot of legwork. A little there off of Turkey, out towards between Turkey and Greece. And then notice, too, the stuff going on in Amman, Jordan, uh, all over Jordan, all the way to the Saudi border. And then, of course, over Israel, uh, nothing going on in, in uh, Australia. A uh, little bit there in Philippines, as always. We see those, again, intel intelligence birds, right? And then we continue on with the survey flights. Now, notice uh, some very long transitions in here. It looks like they are moving back or over to a new location. Let's see what happens. Number over the last three days is 151. Still got some stuff going on up in, in near Anchorage, Alaska. Some stuff in Canada. Beating down a path over Flashbangs area. And um, let's see. Kind of let me zoom in a little, little better for you there. Delaware, it looks to be kind of the focus point here or the focal point. And a little bit northeast of that towards, uh, looks like New Hampshire. And then down south, Miami, again getting it. Over north of Tampa, also getting it. And then we go over here to the northeast side of Poznan. Poznan is a U.S. military base. Looks like some stuff up there to the north. Belgium, again, still doing it. And then uh, near, kind of uh, south eastern side of Milan, and then we've got still work over Barcelona. 
This one over the water, I don't get. I don't know why it is grabbing, but um, either looking at ships or it's getting some LIDAR data that's down underwater because maybe they're concerned about something else, right? Or maybe there's one of those underwater uh, bases there, right? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, and then Australia, just notice up near Brisbane, it is active uh, down. You get a little further south towards south of Sydney, and it's a little bit of work, but not too much. Melbourne is kind of fizzled, and so has Perth. So have they concluded their surveys? Quite possibly. So we'll keep an eye on Australia to see if they wrapped up. That means uh, they're going to be processing the data now, right? And um, again, the areas that they're going back over in the United States, I believe they're just getting a second, third, fourth look over areas just polishing the data, okay? All right, let's talk Ruskies. Little active. This is going to be your dignitaries and your, your, uh, your Russian USSR Air Force. Um, and then just notice that one heads down towards Sochi. And then this, I don't really, that's kind of strange. They're in Turkey. Looks like maybe they did a little bit of flight stuff down in Turkey. And then off to the eastern side of Russia and up to the northern side of Russia looks to be kind of the mix or the flavor for these last couple of days, okay? Nothing over Japan or Australia in terms of the Ruskies. All right, let's go over to the drone side of the house. Nothing over the U.S. That's, I guess, a good thing. Um, all right, now we start talking drones. This is probably a Q9. Could be a Q4. Looks to be in kind of Palmdale area, maybe out towards um, the desert side of the house. Um, and then a little bit there over... Biggs Army Airfield, El Paso, right? And that is actually a British uh, drone that's doing work up there. So maybe they're training or using it for training. Okay. North of Denmark. Again, this is drone activity. It's a low altitude drone. And then look at all the drone stuff around the Mediterranean Sea. Incredible. Notice very hard looks north of Benghazi, north of Tripoli. That's because the Russians are hot and heavy in Libya, folks. All right, so we'll uh, continue to watch those. It looks like a little low-altitude one there over Portugal. We see that from time to time. And then look at this over Turkey. Absolutely just beaten down a path and a half over Turkey and then headed into Cyprus, which is interesting, which tells me... Uh, you don't really see Turkey going in and out of Cyprus too often. That's either a Q9 or a Q4 drone breaking out over the Black Sea. Notice the broken trace. That's because they are killing <laughs> our ability to see what they do. All right. Okay. Now, let's do this. Let's jump over to the R-135s. I don't see any other drone stuff in uh, Southeast Asia or Australia. So, we jump over here. And we've got... R-135s look like they are leaving the United States, headed uh, eastbound into, check this, this looks like it went into kind of Bahrain, and then notice it's doing some research, <laughs> reconnaissance, mapping that battlefield up into Iraq, and probably looking closely at Syria, especially with all of the activity going on in Syria, we, as we have discussed. And then this one coming out of Okinawa, back and forth, looks like into Tokyo and um, and then down south. So, all right, that's going to be R-135s, and then we get into the sub-hunters. Looks like some transitions going back and forth. Notice this one that's breaking out, coming off of Seattle, Tacoma area, and then just kind of goes hidden trace out over the Pacific. All right, and then we head over to Europe, and you're just going to notice that... Uh, it looks to be headed out of Crete kind of area. Malta headed northbound um, up towards, I say Malta, Crete, not Malta. Malta's to the left, uh, headed over Constanta, all right? Okay, that's going to do it for that side of it. Let's uh, Australia is uh, just a couple moves, it looks like, headed uh, northbound, and that's about it. And then we see one little broken trace here. Again, subhunters, P8s, P3s. All right, back to our mini board. Let's do this. So we're going to jump over to, uh, we're going to go to this side of the house. 
and look at the volcanic activity. These are ash alerts for pilots, all right? So just notice we get down into this Southeast Asia kind of, of the house. Down south of Singapore, we've got Krakatoa, Simaru. Um, this one that uh, looks like orangutan, but with a K. And then uh, Dukono. And then out here, even, even this side, uh, Bagana, um, popping off there, kind of between Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. So that's five uh, volcanoes that are spewing ash in the general region. That, this area has gotten pretty active lately. Uh, notice where we normally see things up here in Japan, don't see them. And uh, notice over here, uh, Fuego, that seems to be an ongoing deal. Uh, but then you get down here, and this is actually pretty light. So uh, it's not uh, to the right side of our map. It is not very active and busy compared to what we normally see. Nothing up here, uh, which we have seen pop on and off. But this side is very, very active. And again, if you're um, familiar with this, this is basically your ash alert. It gives you altitudes and forecasts, et cetera, right, based on satellite imagery. And then if you get in a little closer you can usually see uh, which direction that ash cloud is going, all right? So it looks like it's, it's uh, pumping to the north. All right, let's get over here to Flashbang schedule. It is Monday. He is on vacay and uh, looks to be uh, at his beach residence, uh, the Biden Beach House. So anyway, that's where he is right now. We get over here to the weather map and uh, just take a quick look. Looks like we got some power outages here across uh, the, the western side of Missouri. A couple TFRs out here. These are security, which is uh, interesting. And then this is as well. So, and let's go down, see if we've got anything that catches my eye. We do have some little tiny security boxes here, I think. Let me just see what these are. VIP. So it looks like uh, Bob Marley is headed to the region. We know this because of the size of the boxes. More than likely Bob Marley. It's usually either uh, Bob Marley or uh, Flashbang, all right? You can see the Flashbang box, quite large, right? And so it looks like he is, uh, that's going to be his location for a couple days until August 6th. So let's back away from that. And then let's get over here to the news cycle. Yeah, well, I would imagine he's probably talking to his attorneys while he's at the beach house because... Uh, this is a very interesting data point, and I will be shocked if he makes it to the election as well, okay? Because they are saying that it's like organized crime. Multiple banks filed over 170 suspicious activity reports on the Bidens. That is insane. Check this out now. And this is over. Um, this is from six banks over the past few years. But you get into some of the data points around this particular one. Um, it's it's basically says here submitting a SAR, which is a what they call a suspicious activity report. Um, it says it basically invites regulators to come in and regulate. But they are also saying that these submittals are very rare; that they they don't happen a lot, and so. Um, <laughs> The interesting thing, like they say, if you get two on an account, they will not allow you to have a bank account, all right? Uh, they will basically stop your ability to open a, uh, accounts. So when you get 170, that's astronomical. It's unheard of, all right? And so um, <laughs> they're saying that uh, the thing that might trigger this are large transactions that come out of the blue. And uh, again, this is on the Bidens. And oh, by the way, uh, remember, we have found so far 20 shell companies that they are in, involved in in terms of moving money, right? So let's move on from that. Now, if you caught my Monkey Minute yesterday over on Patreon, again, that's exclusive to Patreon only. But if you didn't, uh, this one right here is something that we should all pay close attention to. This is coming from uh, an individual that says, I've never seen anything like this. There is a mysterious Chinese biolab discovered in a remote California city. It's over in, uh, it was operating in Redley, California, uh, in the central San Joaquin Valley. Now, look at the, they say this was, they thought it was an old abandoned location. 
Um, but then they started seeing, you know, you got like hoses running in and out of the building around the back. And then they get inside and they go, holy smokes, it is a bio lab and they're making weapons, they believe, in here. Okay, bio weapons. Now, this is what's crazy. Additionally, uh, they found 900 genetically modified mouse or mice uh, and uh, engineered to catch and carry, uh, I can't say that word, um, living in inhumane conditions. 773 of the mice uh, had been euthanized. And officials found that 178 mice were already dead. Um, they said, this is pretty crazy. This is the individual saying he's never seen anything like that in, 20, in his 25 years. Um, but this is, let me go down a little further, give you an idea. You can see the boxes stacked, all coming from China. All of the, the stuff, the lab equipment that's in here. But what really is crazy is they said they were finding all kinds of different um, Things like blood, um, tissue, just a ton of different things. Let's see here. Tested substances detected at least. So here's the thing. The CDC prevented, uh, and prevention tested the substances and detected at least 20 potentially infect infectious agents, including uh, the coronavirus, HIV, hepatitis, and herpes. Pretty nutty. And, um, yeah, they found, again, a ton of different things like this, for example, blood, tissue, and other bodily fluid samples and serums, and thousands of vials of unlabeled fluids and suspected biological material. Let that sink in. That's the Chinese in California with a little off-the-grid bioweapon lab that is not controlled. Okay, let's get over to the NOTAMs. As you can see, Iceland um, is, uh, has a current exercise going on right now. And then, if you'll notice, too, there's a launch box up here to the north uh, out here in the Arctic Ocean. All right, it looks like somebody's doing some missile testing. And we get over to this general area. It is the usual boxes, although I will tell you this area is, the, is Poland's big concern. And they've got this watch box and we'll get into that here in just a minute with the news. But there's a lot of things happening along their border that they are very uncomfortable with. And then, of course, we get down to the Black Sea, and uh, you will see a lot more boxes and stuff just right along here in the port cities. And let me jump in just so you can see this part. This is Constanta. This is the area that everyone watches closely. Right? It's the only port that they're able to get stuff in and out of. Up here in Odessa is not really working well for him. Okay, here we go. AP, Ukraine, again, this is our top story, again, reporting uh, that uh, Russian, or sorry, Russia and Moscow in general has been under attack with drones. You can see one of the buildings where the drone hit the side, and basically blew out a huge section. Look at all the shattered glass and it takes a heck of an explosion to do that. Uh, all the way up here, cracking glass above it and tearing out a floor. But um, they're saying this is occurring more and more frequently. And so Russia is probably going to have some type of a response to this uh, as this goes forward, because this right here is a very good way to uh, get Kiev pop, popping off. Okay. And uh, it's a good way for Russia to basically step up their effort on the war. So. All right. And as they continue to, to pop things off into Moscow, uh, little man Zelensky is talking to the big guy. Uh, and uh, they're saying that uh, Ukraine wants to start talks with the U.S. on security guarantees, evidently coming out of uh, the last meeting they had with NATO. They were promised some things like security guarantees, et cetera, until um, until Ukraine was admitted into NATO. Or the war kicks off, whichever goes first, right? So uh, I think he's getting a little concerned knowing that um, if if Russia starts to pop on to Kiev, that uh, that's going to be a game changer. He may be baiting them into a war so that uh, the United States and NATO actually engage. So little Napoleon. Okay, here we go. Poland raises the alarm as the Wagner forces move closer to the border. We had just talked about this. One thing I will point out is notice the gear that they are wearing. 
you could look at those guys and not be able to tell other than a patch whether they were U.S. or whether they were Russian. It's uh, pretty crazy uh, seeing the gear that they have on. And um, kind of crazy. Even the camo looks to be very close to ours. So anyway, that's going to be your Wagner boys, which are basically mercenaries, all right? Um, but they, they, what Poland is saying is they have information that more than 100 Wagner mercenaries have advanced towards this, um, this gap in the Grando area, uh, which is nine miles from the Polish border. And that's making them very concerned as they stand up shop there. Again, an area to watch. As you can see, they've been very concerned. Poland has said that they've had some 16,000 uh, people come across their border and in just, uh, let me see what the the number or when the time frame was for that. And there they are doing their training. But um, let's see, Poland began moving more than 1,000 troops to the east uh, amid the concerns of the presence of the Wagner Group. Sorry, a Wagner Group, as they pronounce it. But he also noted 16,000 attempted border crossings by migrants from Belarus has been recorded so far this year. So in seven months, 16,000 have tried to get across the border there from Belarus into Poland. Which we get in like a day or a week. Um, all right, let's go over here to this piece. Ukraine is firing North Korean rockets at Russian forces. Now, this is an interesting change of events. How they're getting that from North Korea, I have no idea. Because um, the U.S., uh, to my knowledge has not been uh, providing them with rockets from North Korea. I know we're, we're sending our 155 Mike Mike uh, artillery from South Korea, but not North Korea. This is a definitely weird. But what's really weird is imagine if you are a soldier in Ukraine and you're trying to learn all these new systems that aren't even in your native language. Um, they say it's just a, a smorgasbord of weapons uh, that these guys have around them and they're you know, they can't use hardly any of them properly. So, uh, again, just kind of a weird weird dynamic going on here. And then speaking of North Korea, check this out. This is an interesting deal. Did somebody give them some data? Did they download this off of a maybe a, a gaming platform? Uh, that would not be the first time this has happened, right? Um, but... North Korea unveils a lookalike Global Hawk Reaper drone. Check this out. Um, these are two different types, right? This is Q4 versus Q9. Uh, but uh, you can see that looks pretty close. The wing system looks a little funky. I don't know why it's white. Uh, probably just not painted yet. But it, it looks like the front of a whale on, in this picture. But as you get down and uh, you get into kind of the details... There it is on the ground. You can see it's got all the, the markings on it. Uh, the engine inlet is covered, right? And there's one of it open, which, again, looks identical to ours. That's it on a runway that probably got some people's attention in the flight test side of the house. But then you go down. Here is theirs, and here is ours. So you can see extremely similar to our aircraft, extremely like, in fact, it looks like an identical copy of it. So, all right, we will uh, continue to monitor that situation. So, all right, let's get over here to the last little news item. And uh, this is going to be taking a look at the news stuff as it relates to the war in Ukraine. And um, it'll show the location on the map so you can kind of understand it. But here on July 17th, they had an attack on the uh, Crimea Bridge. We talked about that in the past. You can see this is a location cutting off the flow of goods in and out of this location from a, a, a land perspective. Then if we go down July 30th, uh, that was yesterday, two skyscrapers in Moscow Premier Business District were damaged by drone strikes, and the city's mayor blamed Ukraine for the latest attack on the Russian capital. And uh, you can see where that took place. And um, this, uh, this site's kind of interesting. If we go up a little further, here we go, to this side of it, you can see there's that bridge, and then we'll go a little further north, Putin's residence. That's uh, getting pretty close, isn't it? Uh, definitely within the range. They've already had hits on the Kremlin from these drone strikes, which uh, is really interesting because if you think about 
Imagine if somebody did a drone strike on to uh, D.C., all right, Washington, D.C. or the Pentagon. That is kind of the equivalent of what is happening there. And I'm shocked that it didn't send them off into some kind of major conflict. But, uh, but yeah, you can see. Let me go a little further north, and it backs up. You can get a very close look. This up here on our screen, uh, that is that is the the nuclear power plant that we've been talking about um, right in the middle of all of this. Okay, so definitely a big concern for everybody. And you can see the areas where they have been pushing forward. And then, of course, they uh, Ukraine has made comments that, oh, we haven't even really – uh, pushed with everything yet. This was just testing the waters. So <laughs> kind of comical um, to say the least, but all right, let's move on over here to Biggs Army Airfield and uh, we'll get a fresh look at what's going on. We've got an Atlas Air inbound from Frankfurt. It's a 747, probably coming back in with some troop rotation. Um, but then notice from there, we've got uh, this Atlas Air looks to be headed to Houston Bush. Uh, normally when we see them go down to Houston, well, I say normally in the past, depending on the rotation, and I think we've already hit our rotation, but they typically are going to Guantanamo Bay out of Houston, but I've never seen a 747 Atlas. Uh, well, I can't, I say that I take that back. I have seen them, but it's been about a year, maybe longer since I've seen an Atlas 747 go to Guantanamo Bay. So, um, We'll see. We'll see what this is. This could be uh, taking some some equipment down there. They may be putting some missile defense stuff in, given the fact that the Russians and the Chinese are to um, their northwest and, you know, over in Havana on the other side of the island. That could be what they're doing. And so, or HIMARS or some artillery. I mean, there's no telling. They may be putting in uh, some structure, some additional ground forces to combat that situation, right? especially if Russia decides to do another uh, Bay of Pigs thing or Cuban Missile Crisis scenario, right? Uh, so I say Bay of Pigs. They had nothing to do with that, really, compared to uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. That's what I meant. All right. Okay, over to Dover. Let's go. Uh, Ramstein. looks like we got one inbound coming back from Ramstein 747, a Coletta Air coming in from JFK, and another Coletta coming from CVG. Um, which is going to be Cincinnati Airport. And then, let's see, it's another 747 inbound from Newark, Liberty. Uh, one coming, an Atlas Air coming in, as you can see down here at the bottom. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is six uh, arrivals of 747-400s. So we are definitely moving those troops and getting another wave of equipment and things going into Europe. Uh, the interesting thing is, as Ukraine is probably getting our equipment smoked and we, we're just sending them replacement equipment and taking away from our own stuff, which is very, very concerning for, for everybody, right? Okay, here we go. Uh, looks like this one is leaving Dover, headed straight to Ford Operating Base RZE. That's as a camber flight, two 747s. The other one's headed to Ramstein. Secondary headed to RZE, Ford Operating Base 747. So three of those that we just looked at over here on the border, two of them, uh, all three are headed to Europe, two of them headed to Ford Operating Base in Poland. And then we get over here to... Ramstein, and uh, you can see we've got one inbound from Anchorage, Alaska. That's going to have those uh, 155 Mike Mike artillery rounds, more than likely. One coming in from Dover, 747 replacement equipment, if I had to guess. And then you have National Cargo coming in, 747 Coletta, 747, both of them uh, departing. Uh, so that uh, this one's already on ground, and other uh, Coletta is. And then this one looks to be headed back to Dover. But yeah, this is very active in Ramstein right now. And then let's take a look at RZE Poland Forward Operating Base. Looks to be camber flight coming in from Dover. Let's head down to see if we've got anything else. Um, Air Ukraine. Interesting. Let's see. I guess maybe they're operating out of there now. Um, 747 from Portsmouth. Head down. German Air Force. That looks like a Polish military. On down, another camera flight coming in from Dover. And on the inbound, nothing. 
Let's go back up and see where these guys are headed. So the Atlas here is headed back over to Hong Kong to go get more artillery, probably. And notice this uh, Ukrainian flight, destination unknown. Um, <laughs> sure. And German Air Force. Oh, where are you headed to? Qantas. All right. Coletta Air 747. Who is this one? Uh, I don't know that matters. That may just be a commercial flight. So it's uh, not as busy as we have seen, but it is busy. It's definitely an uptick. Looks like most of it right now is headed into Germany uh, and not the forward operating base. Okay. What are... This is Camber. So it looks like we've got one Camber flight. I don't know who this is. Estero, Florida. Hmm. That is a private operator coming out uh, from Ohio. Looks like just a private charter, probably troops. And then this one looks to be headed into Sofia, Bulgaria. And uh, that's a 777-200. Again, these are going to be you know, precious cargo, camber flights, which stands for U.S. Transportation Command. And then Western Global, again, bringing artillery out of uh, this one looks coming out of Hong Kong to Anchorage. So they're bringing artillery out, out of the region, Asia, taking it over. Like I said before, if uh, Taiwan pops off, uh, I don't see um, I don't see the U.S. going to bat for them. I think these guys are on their own, and I think the only force that we have in here that is even, uh, you know, any kind of presence is is because of North Korea. If I had to guess, Chinese, yeah, I don't think so. At least not yet. That uh, could change. But uh, given the amount of stuff that we have over in Europe, it would be very difficult for us to, to change gears given the fact that we've been pulling um, equipment out of Asia and pushing it to Europe for the last three, four, five months. Right? Okay. Nothing on the board for NATO. Move on. Over here to Omni, it looks like I'm only seeing one flight up right now for Omni coming out of Manchester to Toronto, Canada. So it looks like Omni right now, their master is the Canadians, and it looks like they are taking troops back and forth into England. Then let's look at the Royal Transport. So this is their, the UK's variant of a camber flight, right? Um, and so uh, A400 Bermuda back to England. Uh, England to destination unknown, two of them. And let me back up and see if we can find them. So this is the Bermuda. And so it looks like this one, hmm, I don't know where that one's headed. It's at 37,000 feet, 400 level at 487 miles an hour. And then this one here looks to be headed. Uh, it's just now climbing out. It's at 11,000 feet. 391 miles an hour, just getting airborne. It may actually do a hook and head back to England. All right, let's talk about the immigrant machine. Notice everything today looks to be headed southbound from border towns, except for that's uh, Alexandria. That's going to be a 72-hour holding facility headed down. Looks to, uh, I think, Bogota, Colombia. And then this one up north, just notice the transition from, it looks to be Jersey, Liberty City, New, uh, Newark. Um, to Bedford. So maybe Amazon related, if I had to guess. All right. Well, listen, that's going to do it for our sit rep today. I hope you guys have a blessed rest of your day and uh, evening for those that are watching it this evening. Um, we will see you on Wednesday with our next live show and uh, see what's happening in the world at that point. So that's it. Stay frosty. Keep that powder dry. We'll talk soon. God bless. Monkey out. Thanks for watching, folks. Check out the latest gear and products over at monkeyworksus.com.